Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Wednesday, January 24th, 2018. Welcome to Wednesday, and oh boy, do I have a great show for you today. But first, we are starting with a correction. On Friday, I had said it was the Walking Titan ARG coming back to No Man's Sky. It's actually Waking Titan instead. Sorry for the confusion. Today starts with the Red String Club, a new game published by Devolver Digital and developed by Deconstruct Team, having met a bit of controversy. On January 22nd, earlier this week, Waypoint author Danielle Reindau put out this article pointing out a trans character character's dead name is used as the password for a character's boyfriend's computer. Just for the record, this boyfriend is written to be a stupid douchebag, someone who you aren't supposed to like, and this incident in-game just reinforces that. For those who may not be aware, dead naming is when someone refers to a trans person by the name they were born with, rather than the name they go by now. In a follow-up article, Danielle posts an email from Paula, a member of Deconstruct Team, who explains the use of it, saying, dead naming sucks, but it's also a part of trans people's realities, and the game tries to capture that bit too. In a Twitter thread, Paula goes into this more and the accusations of the character being hypersexualized, saying, Now about the hypersexualized trope. What? She's an incredibly sexualized character, and what about it? Can't we trans people like sex and talk about it like cis people would? The original Waypoint article definitely jumped the gun on accusing the team of transphobia without looking at the bigger picture of the game, but the author put out an article with the dev team actually explaining why the game contains what she had taken issue with. Remember, this was a plot device and not an actual person being the target of hate. Otherwise, it would be like trying to charge somebody with murder for any time they wrote a story about murder, and that just doesn't make any sense. And that brings us to release announcements, starting with a delay of Bioware's new game Anthem until sometime 2019. In the complete opposite, and a rare announcement, the Banner Saga has actually moved their release date forward, and it now will be releasing in the summer instead of the winter as previously indicated. Focus Home Interactive announced today Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2, coming to PC later this year. Plunkbat, also known as PUBG, also known as Work You Stupid Piece of Shit, also known as Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, has gotten an update on the PC version, which removes weapons from the starting area of her angle, and PUBG Corp says that a new anti-cheat measure is on the way. Phyrexis has revealed that Scotland will be the next country to join the many civs in Civilization VI as part of the Rise and Fall expansion, still no release information yet. And in final update news, EA says there are quote, significant changes coming to Star Wars Battlefront 2 in the next coming months. Oh, are people actually going to start playing it? I haven't heard it past 1 million in sales yet. Moving on to this one with a leak of some of the details for the Resident Evil 2 remake having released onto 4chan. And the internet has become upset with one of those details. A third-person camera is going to be included instead of a fixed camera seen in the original. The developer of the remake has come forward to say a third-person camera is just fine, and I personally agree with him. This is a remake, not a remaster, which should try to portray the game as close to original as possible. And because this is a remake, I feel as though the third-person camera is fine, plus I would prefer a third-person camera over a fixed camera perspective. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Here's a story that I'm still learning more about and seems to be in development. The studio behind Drawn to Death, the Bartlett Jones Supernatural Detective Agency, I love that name, has had to lay off many of its staff and cancelled an unannounced project. This is the same studio the director of Twisted Metal is a part of, and the future of the studio seems grim. Stay tuned to News Cartridge for any further updates. Today, Ubisoft has revealed a new virtual assistant for gaming. Its name is Sam, and Sam will be able to answer questions related to games such as the weather in Black Flag, release dates, trailers, and help with playing games. Games. It's gonna put me out of a job. Ubisoft also says there are plenty of Easter eggs in it, including one related to the definition of insanity. Hi Sam! Find me a game that isn't riddled with microtransactions. Sam? In other Ubisoft and microtransaction news, just like Rainbow Six Siege, guess which one of their games they shoved loot boxes into now? Ghost Recon Wildlands! Known as Battle Crates, they're expected to arrive before the end of the month, and Ubisoft says that they will only contain cosmetic items. This next story is in no way related! Activision says Destiny 2 players are not happy because of microtransactions. Do you hear that, Ubisoft? This has nothing to do with you at all. Yeah, who'd have thought that adding in quasi-pay-to-win elements and holding back rewards to push recurrent consumer spending opportunities would make your customers unhappy? The best part of this article, in my opinion, is the part where it says that, yeah, people are unhappy with Destiny 2, but people are even more unhappy with Star Wars Battlefront 2. <laughs> Let's move on. Atari Game Partners wants to release Roller Coaster Tycoon for the Switch and wants your help 
help for some reason. They are wanting to crowdfund this in a way with people who put down at least $250 receiving a share of 50% of the profits of sales up to 120% of what they originally invested or $300 and afterward 25% of the profits for 18 months will be split up between the investors. For $750 you get a discount on the game not the game itself. For $1,500 you get a book called The Art of Atari and still no game. AGP has already reached their starting goal of $10,000 but have yet to reach their end goal of $1.07 million. That does sound like a pretty good deal but you don't get a copy of the game that you put money down for. You still have to go out and buy it. And finally for today because I feel like we have to end on some sort of positive note here is unofficially licensed Legend of Zelda beer. Atlanta Brewing Company Second Shelf Beer has dubbed this Triforce IPA. Better drink it now if you're over the age of 21 of course because I'm sure Nintendo is drafting up their cease and desist letters now. I could drink to these, it's tomorrow's game releases. For PC, Gimbal Gravity, Delete, The Beanstalk, Harsh, The Mind's Eclipse, Guns and Notes, Dust and Salt, Zombie Derby 2, Celeste, and Abstractism. For PlayStation 4, Laws of Machine, ACA Neo Geo, Shock Troopers, and Celeste. For Nintendo Switch, Celeste, Dust Off Heli Rescue 2, Atomic, Run Gun, Jump Gun. Three games here, Pick a Picks Deluxe, Small Puzzles 1, Large Puzzles 1, and Mixed Puzzles 1. Zero Gunner 2, Strikers 1945 2, Tachyon Project, Super One More Jump, Tennis, and Fantasy Hero Unsigned Legacy. For Nintendo 3DS, Zigzag Go. Thank you very much everybody, this has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff, I will see you tomorrow. And I asked the librarian if they had any books on paranoia. She whispered, they're right behind you. What a great show, I enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Hit that like button if you did, hit the dislike button if you did not, but either way, it helps me out. Click up here to watch the bonus cartridge for today, click down here to watch yesterday's episode, which was about Denuvo being sold to an anti-piracy company called Erdito, and click over here to subscribe to my wonderful channel. Thank you, and I will see you tomorrow.